pray for them. But there's, I want to, I want to say this this morning. There's reasons for suffering. There's reasons in this life for suffering. We can't judge because we don't know what those reasons are in individual people's individual lives. We're not supposed to go around like Job's friends did and say, well, it's because you did. You must have sinned. You must have done this. You must have done that. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me pull myself That's together. okay. But there's reasons for suffering. There's reasons that I've went through suffering in my life. And I want to give you a few of them reasons and help you understand maybe if they're suffering. And even the reason this world is suffering and this, even our, our nation is suffering right now. There's reasons for that. The main one, and one of the main reasons that I've suffered in my life is because of sin. I let sin creep into my life. Anything that goes against the law of God, that goes against the will of God in my life is sin. And it becomes sin when I know that it's wrong. My conscience tells me. My heart tells me. The law of God tells me. But I do it anyways because it serves myself. It pleasures myself. Whatever it may be that I think is going to be profit myself. I consider to do that. And it never turns out that way. It never ends up profiting you in the long run to sin. But that instant gratification, just like the world's teaching us today, that instant joy or that instant happiness like somebody going out and consuming alcohol, it feels good right in the moment. Then there's a thing called when you uh, get hungover or maybe the aftershock. Nothing goes away. When you feel the joy of God and you give something to Jesus Christ on an altar, it goes away. It is casted away yes. into the sea of forgiveness, never to bring for again against you again. But when we try to take away those things with drugs and alcohol, things of this world, sex, whatever it may be in this life, it, it's temporary and it's it's just for a short short season and then it seems like they compile on you all over that much more of a burden and you never got rid of it to begin with it's just like you just became uh, unaware for just a certain amount of time but that sin can creep into anybody's life nobody is too big uh, and, and it seems like it's in high places and that's where the devil said he would work and it's corruption in high places and all these things we're seeing in society. And then we can see all these people that's going to and fro and all these riots and stuff. They're just pawns like they're being puppets on a string for the prince and the principalities and the powers of the air. And it's not them that we should be fighting. It's, the, it's what's behind it. And it's Satan and the things that he's trying to do. to are working as hard as he can because he knows he is about to, it's about to be over for him. He'll have a few short Maybe years in the tribulation, it's over. He knows. He's working up to that point. It's the end times. And we need to be aware of that. Like we was talking about sober-minded and knowing the reason that we're suffering. But that sin can creep in and it gives you a separation. God can't bless over sin. When he looks down, he, he sees the blood of Jesus Christ and that, that will take us to heaven. And that's the only thing that covers our sins, but then it's just like we've got that pure white coat that he gives us spotless, blemishless, and then we kind of get spots on it. And Sarah, uh, every time, it seems like every time I eat, I'll look down and there's a stain. Every time we try to go out in the world, we'll mess up. Every time maybe a wrong word that we shouldn't have said that maybe hurt somebody. Just maybe little things. I'm not telling you that it's these terrible crimes and rape and murder and things. It's little things that God, that Satan uses against Christians that, yeah. that that can corrupt and keep us from coming into the house of God and serving Him and feeling His Holy Spirit. It's those little things. We have to look like we're looking into a mirror, it, the Bible teaches, and try to find, not find our brother's faults, but find our own faults in us. Then we can go out and shine uh, our our life as an example of what Jesus Christ wanted us to be, to be Christ-like, to be Christians. But like so many people are supposed to be Christ-like and they're projecting the devil in their life and their deeds. They're projecting worldly things. They've let sin creep in that's not been dealt with, not been humbled down and cast 
into God's merciful hands and done away with. Because God's already forgiven all these sins when you're saved. They're already cast away. They were nailed on that cross 2,000 years ago. But when we do sin willingly, it brings shame. It brings reproach. It brings uh, all these things. And we have to acknowledge that before God humbly and 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 really acknowledge it in our heart, our heart and mean it and just not be like, well, I did it again. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I didn't mean to do that. Maybe, maybe I'll straighten up next time. That's not how it works, and God can't bless over that. But there's so many sins that need to be dealt with, and even I catch myself every day, and I'm thankful that God shows me these things, and I'm also thankful another reason we suffer, or that reason is because He chastises me for that sin in this life. I suffer a lot of times and go through a lot of situations because I chose to go my way instead of his way. I chose to let that sin remain in my heart or in my life or in my mouth or in my way where I'm going or what I'm doing instead of dealing with it right then when he gives me that way of escape. But I keep on going and going down the wrong way and veer off that straight and narrow way and I have to suffer for it. That's a reason that a lot of people suffer in this life. There's a cause and there's an effect because of the sin in people's lives, because of the sin in this nation, because of the abortion and the and the mental illnesses of gay being gay and lesbian and all these things that people are consuming and the play, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. There's an effect for that. And that is a nation that forgets God is destroyed that, and that without remedy. And we're having to watch our nation that was set up on the foundation of Jesus Christ, was set up set on the foundation of getting away from being con religious control and having freedom to worship God in the way that He intended it with the freedom of the Holy Spirit to lead and direct us. And we came into a whole new country, and He blessed this country so much. He's still blessing us. Just kind of like David, his, after he had died, the kings after him were still blessed because of his righteousness. I believe a good saint of God that died and was a powerhouse for God, her family still blessed for the things that she did for God. I believe that. Mm -hmm. But we suffer a lot of times because of sin. There's different reasons for suffering, though. I'm going to tell you, there was a lot of times. I'm going to tell you another reason that people... Uh, have to suffer and that is for the glory of God Then people that dad was talking about that Jesus went through and was healing the lame and the sick and then he's asked what the, the Pharisees asked why why do you think he was uh, lame in one instance in my own words and they were saying all these things but Jesus said just so that my glory could be shown through him his whole hit so that he could be healed of Jesus Christ that we go through things just to see if you're going to call on him and see if you're going to do and let him take it away. We have not because we ask not. I believe that's a reason sometimes that I've suffered. He, he's testing us, trying to build us like strong granite in the Bible teaches, trying to mold us and prepare us for the, wor the world waxing worse and worse. He's trying to build us, but some of us just throw up our hands and quit. We'll just give up. We'll just fall by the wayside. We'll backslide. And keep God from being able to use it. He just has to crush our lives just like clay and start forming us all over again. I want to be fully formed and be a vessel that God can fill with his Amen. spirit that he can pour out onto this world and use. But it seems like every time that, that I would do good, evil is always there. And I have to, he has to just crush me and push me down, take away some things, maybe with illness, maybe uh, but maybe on my job situations. And I'll tell you, if you really search out why you're suffering, there's a reason. It may just be for the glory of God, just like Job had to endure all that. And he blessed him tenfold because he stuck true. He still had emotions. He still had feelings. He still had doubts. But he stuck true to the one who took, brought him through. He didn't just throw up his hand and say, well, I'm not going to serve a God that's not going to intervene for this. It's not our way. It's his way. His ways are higher than our ways. We don't understand we're supposed to trust. And your suffering, I believe, will help somebody else every single time. If you handle that suffering the right way, it will not only help you, strengthen you, mold you better, build your faith help you to be a better Christian, it'll also help other people, everybody around you. 
when I see somebody's in stuff that I can't even imagine that people have went through, but they stuck hold of God, they stayed true, they held fast to the right, it it blesses my soul and strengthens me and Noah, just kind of like the disciples when they Jesus had already run away or uh, went away to heaven, and they were still preaching the gospel, and they brought, got brought in and got beaten for, for preaching about Jesus Christ, and they left. It says went out rejoicing that they had got to suffer just a little bit of what Jesus Christ had to suffer, and that leads me to one of the other. That may be the last point of suffering that I might make, and there's multiple ones that the Lord showed to me, but it's persecution. We may have to suffer to do God's will in our life, but there's no consequences for serving to, for doing God's will. That we may have to, like Dennis was saying, this world's waxing worse and worse. In 25 countries in the world, it is a crime punishable by death to talk about Christianity and preach the gospel. Did you know that? 25 countries in the U.S. You can be put to death just by saying Jesus' name on the street and trying to cross a lot, trying to bring people into their religion. That just the other day, even in the Jewish, in Israel, they took down a, uh, a Christian uh, TV station that was in Israel just the other day just because they thought that they were trying to pull Jews away from their religion and trying to give them Christianity. And that's exactly what they were doing because that's what we were called to do is to be fishers of men and show people the right way. The Jews have been given a strong delusion that, that they couldn't see the whole picture, but God still loves them people. And God still loves these people that's been given strong delusions, believe in lies and all this stuff. It's our job to go out and display our suffering the right way, even through, because we're this life is full. It's just a few days and full of trouble. And we've got to display that the right way and show people. And it, it strengthens us and it strengthens everybody around us, like I said before. And it, it, it shows us so many things. And it blesses my heart to see somebody handle and suffering the right way, no matter what happened. If it is sin, taking it to the altar, giving it to God, turning from our wicked ways, and letting Him heal our land, heal our life. And if it is for the glory of God, understanding that I'm going to endure this for a short while, just like Paul had to endure his uh, thing that he had to deal with in his flesh, whatever it was. He endured, he said, His grace was sufficient. Do you believe that this morning, that His grace is sufficient? Because He said all these troubles, all the, He talked about all these things that He had dealt with, being shipwrecked multiple times, and, and all these things. He said they count as nothing for what we are have to gain, in my own words. What we have to gain, all the things that have been promised that we can't, a mortal man can't even understand, we've got more, like He said, to go to heaven for than we had yesterday. Each time somebody passes on and goes to glory, we've got more to go to heaven. But I want to, I just want to say this briefly, and this is really what the Lord has laid on my heart, and this is, I want to talk about money for a little bit, and I want to show you the correlation between money and sin, and how we're supposed to handle, Christians are supposed to handle money. There are many verses in the Bible about money. It said the love of money is the root of all evil, the love of Money is a tool that we're supposed to use to better our lives, to provide for our families, and to do, and it even brings joy and, and things that we even want, to, not just the things we need. And Lord blesses us so much. He's blessed this nation so much that we're spoiled. It's like every person in this world, even me, I, I, I'm spoiled. And when I don't get my way, I, I, we get irritable. And if we project the wrong attitude into this world, so many times, not a Christian attitude. So many times I, we get mad and, and puffed up and we don't come to ourselves and let the Spirit guide us. But money can destroy so many people. There's a verse, and I want to explain it because it got explained to me and it really changed my the way I thought about that. It says, in my own words, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter heaven. And so you read that just a face value, there's no rich man going to be in heaven, period. But that's not true. The eye of a needle, 
at the edge of every city in the edge of the desert. There would be, just like semi-trucks are rolling down our interstates, there were caravans of camels going to them cities at that time. They had all the goods, spices, whatever you could think of, and they would travel. Before they did, before they could enter that city, they had to pull every single item off of that camel, and it had to be looked at, and it had to be taken off. Then the camel could walk through with nothing else on it but just the camel and the man could walk through this thin, this, it was just enough for this camel. Nothing could enter that city except what, without everything being taken off. And that made me really think, everything Jesus said in the Bible and everything in the Bible got so much more meaning. If we want that extra wisdom, we could dig deeper and deeper and never, never quit finding out more and more about these simple scriptures. But that really, I believe that's what he was talking about. This rich man, that if we get riches in this life, it consumes us and keeps us from fulfilling God's will in our lives. That money is a tool. And God has blessed so many people with all these resources, but they are squander them and waste them on their own fleshly lusts and desires. Or they hoard them up and never and get greed in their heart. And so many things. My, but it will destroy you every time loving money more than loving God. And letting that money drive you, driving for more money instead of driving for more God and more of His love and spirit. And I'll tell you, if we drive for more of His love and spirit, He will give us the things we need. And He will give us the money we need to provide for our family every single time. David said he'd never seen his seed forsaken or begging bread. Amen. Never seen it. But we wonder, it says somebody that strives and is working hard. The Bible teaches that's the person that will get rich. Working hard. But what are we working towards? I, we're supposed to be working towards the glory of God and getting souls saved in this world. But a rich man can get in heaven if they'll forsake that and put it in its place and prioritize. Money has to be prioritized in a Christian's life. We are stewards. That money, if you look at that money, does it have your face on it? Does it have your name on it? No. That is just something that you've been given for work, maybe been given for a sit something situation, Amen. maybe you're not in love. Amen. And we're ch whatever He gives us, the houses, cars, whatever the Lord's blessed you with, it's supposed to, we're supposed to be stewards. What does that mean to be a steward? That means, just like another parable, the, the husbandman, the, the owner of the whole farm or the vineyard had went away and he left a few good men in charge to keep it to nurture it to build it up to bring forth good fruit while he went away and then the people worked and they were doing good for a few weeks and then they just up and quit because they said well he's never coming back or they just kind of forgot his promise that he had made that he is coming back and they, they just kind of forsook all their duties. They didn't keep the vineyard long. It wasn't as bearing as much good fruit until it wasn't hardly bearing any fruit. And then the husband come, come, come back. And he had to search out and see who was actually doing what he had originally promised, that they had originally promised. And there was a few that were still doing us the remnant of God in the end times, I believe, that are still trying to serve God. And he had to punish those that didn't. And that's that suffering that we were talking about earlier. But I want to be somebody that's fulfilling God's promises on this earth. He's went away to prepare us a place. But uh, we're supposed to be, like I said, good stewards. But I want to get into this. As soon as we, there's a lot of people. Here's, they said, there's a statistic. 80% of people that live paycheck to paycheck. They get paid and they squander, it's gone. They pay their bills because they're in debt and it, it takes most of it and then they just, they don't have priorities right or they may be going over to the casino, all these different things. They need, they want all this stuff. They want to live above their means. And so there's all this stuff and they're in debt up to their eyeballs. And that makes them, it's, the Bible teaches to be, they're slaves unto the lender. They're just like people going out into this world and just living for themselves and in pleasures of this world. And I'm not saying it's a sin to be in debt. That's, the Bible doesn't say that, so I'm not going to preach that. But 
they go out in this world and they get wrapped up and consumed with what they want instead of what God wants. God wants us to save and invest. Save and invest. We're saving. We're putting our treasures in heaven. We're saving all that we can for the end. We need to save all that we can for so we can. We may have to make a few sacrifices right now. We may have to make a few sacrifices. I'm not just talking about money too spiritually. Our time, putting forth a little effort to come to church a few hours to for the glory of God. For our talents, putting forth a little time and effort to but give our talents to the Lord and be used by God. Our money just to be used as a resource, not just to keep the lights on in the church house, but to help the people in need that may be in your life right now and that, we're, that we may be neglecting right now. And somebody might ask for, for a bread. Would you give them a stone, like the Bible said? There's, there's people in your life that need your walk with God to be seen to them that may have even seen it in the wrong way and they need to be rebuilt up and show them that there is a better way to live and a righteous life means something and is worth something. But investing in people. I want to invest my time and my effort and my, my money, whatever the Lord, that uh, percent that the Lord lays on my heart to give to the, even to this church that I can see fruit bearing you and, I, and you can see fruit bearing me. And then on your job and in this life, in this world, we're supposed to give and to invest in this world. We're supposed to cast our bread on the water. And it won't return to us void if we're doing it the way God teaches us out of love, out of kindness, bear, bearing one another's burdens and not doing it out of hatred and malice and, and, and just, be, just yelling at people. Because there is a reason to go out and yell at people. There is a reason to go out and shake people and try to stir them up and say, if you don't stop what you're doing, there's a place called hell that's real that you're going to go to. And it's scary, but that's we have to wait on the convicting power of God. He wants us to move into them people's lives, but God's working on the other end. And you'll see it move. You'll see Him move. And they'll come and wherever they are, or maybe in this church house, and they'll be saved. And then you won't have to worry about them. God's got them on the right track. And we just pray that they keep the faith. They keep that armor on. And they keep fighting this battle that we're in right now for the glory of God against the forces of evil. We manage, if we, if we save and if we invest, if we live the way God wants us to do, and if we, if we sacrifice a little of our time, it'd be like, man, I want to go and get this brand new gun. It's, or I want to go get this brand new vehicle. I want to go get this brand new. I've got enough money or maybe I can go in debt enough to get it. I've got enough credit. But how will that help if I can't give any to it? So I'm so far into something that I wanted that I could never afford to give to anybody else and invest in anybody else or anything else in this life. Maybe the things that we need. Gambling becomes a sin when you take food out of your children's mouths or food or uh, resources that should go to help up your brothers and sisters in Christ and you take it and it's like you're throwing it out the window. If you want to do that, roll down your window and just start throwing money out the window. That's fine. But there's a reason to save. Because, and I want to get that into our heavenly treasures in heaven. Every relationship that we make and every godly conversation that we have, every prayer that's prayed with a loved one, everything that's that's done for the glory of God, that lays up more treasure in heaven. And God is a God of rewards. Amen. And there's rewards for that stuff. We don't understand everything that's going to go on in heaven, but I believe there's rewards for and there's there's and I get blessed so much. Just one good thing. And he, he blessed me more than I deserve. And then he I believe it's even a blessing that he chastises me because I know that he still cares enough about me to stop me from going down too far down that wrong road because it will lead to destruction. And he stops me and sets me back, sets my feet back on that solid rock every single time. I may squirm and move around and slide all over, but he's never lost me and I've never lost him and I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful. He's never lost you and, and he's brought you through so many things. But it's time that God wants us to invest more for the kingdom of God. He wants us to save more for this heavenly home. We need to, and I'm not telling you not to go out 
and provide for your family and all these things and enjoy this beautiful creation that he's made and, and all these things. But I'm saying if we need to be sober and vigilant, we need to be biding our time. Because what if you've what if you've squandered all that he's given you? Just like those that one the like the talents in the parable of the talents. Or maybe you just go out, maybe God's blessed you with a good talent to sing or whatever. You just go somewhere and better bury it. We're supposed to multiply our talents. Just like the one with ten talents got ten more talents. The one with five got five more. And God was pleased with that. When we're saved, we're supposed to go out and help others to see what we got and multiply that. And, and just like when, like I said, multiple people in the Bible, when they were saved, their whole household was saved. That's what we're called to do is to give. And that's investing in people. It's easy in this world to just go to work or just go out and get what you need and come back home and stay there because of this world's getting so bad. But God's still asking us to invest in Him, invest in His Word, save all, <coughs> save as many people as we can with the truth of the gospel and try to shine all we can. We can't, I'm not saying we can save anybody, but God, I believe, is working on the other end in somebody's life. God is working on the other end to touch somebody. I'm about to close. But I hope you can see that money is a tool and we're a steward. And we need to and, and it needs to be used for God. It needs to be used and we need to invest in our time, more of our time, more of our resources into God's heavenly uh, charge and his course that he's set us on as we get a song. But going back to suffering. If you're suffering this morning, and even we've even got a prayer box up here, and if you're here with us, if you wanted to write, we've got index cards up here. If you've got somebody that has a need, you can come up here and we can pray over that before we leave. And this mercy seat is always open. It's always accepting. It's like kneeling before God Himself when we humble ourselves before our peers and go boldly before the throne. That's what it's like, and you'll get things done, and you'll see things move if you've done it with a humble and contrite spirit. As page, we say. Page 396, the bottom of the page. When my way groweth dear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is
teaches us to give a tenth of the first fruits of what God's blessed us with for him. But I believe that's just a starting point. I'll tell you. And here's another thing. If you've got a preacher that's up and on TV, whatever it is, and he's asking you to give him money, you know you're in the wrong place. But I'm asking you to give God the resources that he blessed you with. I'm asking you to put forth a little more effort, a little more time in his word, a little more investing in people's lives that you just seem to write off. This, I don't know if this, this person drives me crazy or whatever. Well, the Lord's put people in your life that, that you probably don't want to deal with, but God's asking you to deal with them. Maybe put up with them, try to lead them better. and You'll change their whole life. And it'll mean so much once you see God work through their life because of your faith and your perseverance through Him. And it means so much to Him when we follow His will. That tenth, uh, that first fruits, when we, as soon as we see God, the first fruits of our life, this is spiritually speaking, was when He saved us. Amen. We're supposed to give back from that. We can never repay what Jesus Christ has done for us. We'll never be able to repay. No matter how many songs I sing, no matter how many times I stand before you, I'm just, we're supposed to empty our life and just let Him use us and be a vessel. But I appreciate everybody being here this morning. I love all of you. So I hope you have a good day. Anybody got anything on their heart or a word or prayer before we close? I know the child is going to be so we get to the little boy, little boy, three or four. And this guy invited him, the other man invited him to church. Present our body as a living sacrifice. Amen. And that's what he did. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything a word on their heart or anything? Anyone? If not, you're at liberty.